focus, focus. I'm Cesar Santos. I wanted to take this time to talk about what is to paint realistically. bunch of artists out there asking me how do we paint realistically definitely is to control the tools that you have to represent nature's effect uh, to represent the visual effect from the human point of view photorealism is just a mechanical attitude of copying a mechanical process even though at the end it looks like nature you're actually copying an effect taken by a camera Okay, the camera scura started developing in the 16th century and then as it evolved it became the photographic camera in the 19th century and in the 1990s then we came to have the digital cameras. Okay, so something that is inspired in this kind of magical mechanical process cannot be associated with naturalism or with realism. It's more of a machinerism, maybe, because it's definitely associated with photographic image. And I don't want to talk about that. That's a different genre. The whole process of making a photorealistic image is, uh, is totally different. And I know, and I'm guilty of it, that sometimes we create paintings that people say, oh my God, it looks like a photo. And I understand for an eye that is not trained, uh, it might look like realism, and the closest thing they have is a photo but I want to make that distinction clear. If you think about it, kids have that idea already set when they try to, to draw something. Kids want to paint realistically. They think uh, a house is a square with a triangle on top and, um, and then a mountain might be just a, like a big pyramid or people might be a, a circle as a head and then like sticks for the limbs. But is that real? And as we grow up, we want to be more realistic. We want to be more uh, precise in terms of being loyal to nature. But um, what exactly are we pursuing? A photographic effect, an effect of nature? So what I want to tell you is that to paint realistically, you have to forget about the preconceptions that we have about nature. To paint realistically, you have to think in the abstract. The other day I saw David Lefeld talking about abstract realism and I thought it was very interesting. We learned this from the Impressionists that actually the, the, the scene was made out of splashes of color and paint. They discovered how abstract the retina works to, to compose a visual field in front of us, right? Abstract painting is not abstract at all. If you, drip, if you see drips, they're drips and if you see a splatter is a splatter and a brush stroke of red is a brush stroke of red that is actually very realistic but if you look at a painting by Carvaggio that is abstract because there is a bunch of darkness and lights that uh, the darkness reads as air how do you paint air and if you put a, a few values together that feel like air when people look at it that is an abstraction of nature so definitely to be able to paint realistically you have to think in the abstract think in the conceptual you have to break down the system the process and in which you will create something that feels unrealistic and unnaturalistic as a process you have to break it down in terms of isolating line quality the outline values the dark and light and color the quality that goes on top of that okay after we have understood and studied how to make um, proportions correctly how to describe an object with just a simple outline and then we give values to those um, outlines to those boundaries and that those values give the masses the the weight and the presses the value has to dominate first then the color has to be subordinate and match that level of light and dark. So never think of something red and get the tube of red color and paint it because it's not gonna match the value. You have to alter the color to match the value and the value is within those boundaries. So you see, it's an order, a progression to be able to represent a realistic scene. Color has a lot to do with our culture, our sensitivity color can bring an object to life or can subdue an object too 
color will give quality to to the scene it will give quality to the object to the to the flesh if you think about it a fruit is about the same shape just the color tell us if it's ready or not since antiquity artists have been trying to represent nature and all these names that i told you masasho botticelli da vinci carvaggio rembrandt has been a progression of knowledge shared and learned from the previous generation to the second one um, achieving elements and principles that they have used in order to represent nature in a better way with a with a bigger power each individual time span is not even enough to develop it so you just have to use what the people before you use to solve those problems so that's the way we learn nowadays we have all this knowledge to our disposal so that we can look at the masters and apply that in a new way like they all did contemporary artists think that to paint realistically is either easy or not uh, abstract enough or not conceptual enough you realize that first if you have to see something that exists around you and you have to break it down into these conceptual ideas into these abstract elements of a flat line adding light and dark and reflections within it adding color to it is very conceptual very abstract in a way that um, is meant to be presented with only using tools that is either a charcoal a pencil or some colors which is a pigment mixed with some oil that for me is beyond realism it's beyond naturalism so you don't call me a realistic artist or a classical painter you can call me a conceptual abstract realist <laughs> okay let's wrap this video up if you want to paint realistic when representing form first you have to be artistic so the concept be born 